After leaving the charming town of Yufuin, rather reluctantly, today we find ourselves at Beipu. Known for its seven hell, Beipu offers several spectacular natural wonders. From bubbling mud pool, steaming geyser, hot spring of different hills, to crocodile, Beipu is a feast for the senses. Join us as we spend a day in Beipu and find out if all seven hells are worth visiting. But first, let's fill our stomach with Tori Tan, an Oita specialty dish. Our lunch today is at a restaurant called Toyosune. We are supposed to pour this sauce over the chicken. And now, for the taste test. I expect it to be like the chicken breast kind of texture, but it's not. It's like those fatty chicken meat. It's really unique. It has the right amount of batter surrounding it. And the batter is, is really good as well. So this is our side dish. It's all fried stuff today. For my main course, it's their abi tempura. The abi tempura is actually really big. There's options for two, three, or four abi tempura. I may have a taste. Mm. The prawn is really fresh, but it's a little bit oilier because it has a lot of the batter. I still prefer the chicken, so if you are here, you can consider to order this specialty dish. This one is said to be their specialty as well, but I guess it's because the prawn is really fresh. It's a little bit too oily for me. I have ordered the anago don. This is the second top specialty in this shop. Let me try. Mm. This is the first time I eat the bura style unagi. The fish is actually just a very thin layer. It's a very unique way of eating because usually we will grill the unagi instead of fry it. It's delicious. What do you think about this restaurant? It's quite a cozy restaurant. The tempura, especially the toritan, is delicious. I would advise not to order so many dishes because at the end, the tempura batter gets a little bit... Uh, the word is jelat. The restaurant staff are very friendly. If you only have one dish to pick, please pick the chicken tempura, even yeah. though it's not their signature dish mentioned in the menu. Mm. Don't hesitate. Chicken dish. Just order the yeah. chicken tempura. It is now 12.30 p.m. We are heading to the seven hells of Beipu. Hopefully, we can complete them by the end of the day. Number one, Onishibozu Jikoku. In the booklet, they were saying that the grey colour mark is like the shaved head monks, but it's not that round. It's pretty much just uh, like a boiling kind of mud. boiling mud. Yeah. yeah. Okay, on to the next Jikoku. Hopefully, it's better. <laughs> Second Jikoku, the Umi Jikoku. It was created 1,200 years ago. The specialty of this Jikoku is the mystery color of cobalt blue. And inside this Jikoku, there is also another greenhouse. Inside, there is a lotus leaf, which they mentioned that it can carry a children's weight. The special thing about a greenhouse is that it is using the Jikoku gas. Although... We are not sure how yeah. they are using it. Five more to go. Now we are at the Omi Cafeteria. We got attracted by this ice cream called Kabusu. It's a lime flavour and lime is actually a specialty in Oita. So let's try. It tastes exactly like the lime popsicle but it's in a soft serve form. Mm. Right outside Umi Jikoku, there's also another one which is not on the list of seven. It's called Yama Jikoku, but I guess it, it's just some kind of zoo, so it's excluded from the list.
Jikoku number three, the Kamado Jikoku, which is the cooking pot hell. This Jikoku discharge the largest number of hot spring water in Japan. That's all. Mm. <laughs> At the side, there's actually the 80 degree hot water and it's 10 yen for the cup to put the water in. I hope it is not as weird as the one we had at Nagayu on set. Oh, it's actually much better. The sulfur taste is fainter, but it's a little bit salty. If the one at Nagayu Onsen was like this, I think I would get a bottle of it home. I really mm. like it. I think I'm gonna finish this. Mm. Well, apart from the statue just now, there are a few experience points where you can experience things Steam. related to Jikoku. One of them is the water that we tried. There's also one where you can put your whole face right at the steam. There is also one pond that yeah. will change colour throughout the year. When we are there, it's like blue, but it will change to brown and uh, green. green. Yeah. And right at the end of the trail, there's a shop that sells a lot of steam products. So if you're hungry, you can try some of them. They do have the limited edition soy sauce pudding, which mm. we really wanted to try, but we are too full to try it. If you do come here and you try it, do let us know if it's good. The fourth Jikoku is the Oniyama Jikoku and it's a crocodile farm. Behind us are the crocodiles that live in a hot spring water. They first bred the crocodiles in 1923 and they found out that the temperature of the hot spring water is very suitable for the crocodile and that's why behind us there are so many crocodiles and they are huge. <laughs> you can see the crocodile quarrel once mm. in a while. So if you are into crocodile, head over here. Mm. If not, you can skip this. <laughs> the fifth Jikoku is the Shirake or the White Horn Jikoku. But we're not sure why it doesn't fit the description on the brochure. It's supposed to be white. But right, the colour should be white. But now it's green. Maybe it changes colour based on the season like the one we saw at Kamado Jikoku. But it's a unique colour that we didn't see so far. Ah, yes, yes. We saw red, brown, blue, blue but not green. The 6 Jikoku, the Chinoike Jikoku. The specialty is that this is a red pool. This is the oldest natural Jikoku in Japan. It's believed that it has healing properties for skin disease. So they actually have a store that sells those products. We'll be heading to our 7th and final Jikoku next and we'll see you there. Our seventh and final Jikoku, the Tatsumaki Jikoku. We went in just now and we waited about 20, 20 minutes, minutes to see the Kaiser. I was pretty surprised that for 5-10 minutes everybody was seated, seated down there. Yeah. and just enjoying the Kaiser sprout. After which they then moved forward to take pictures. When I was waiting for the Kaiser, I felt a bit insecure because there isn't a timer or there isn't a mask to say that it was sprout. And one fact about this geyser is they have the shortest sprout intervals in the world. Based on the instruction, the geyser will sprout every 30 to 40 minutes and it will last for 6 to 10 minutes. And they built the stone wall to avoid the sprout to go too high up because it can go up to 30 meters. Mm. We will be heading back to our Ryokan for the night. So thanks for joining us. Bye we'll bye. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. And this is Jikoku 3.5, the random stone fight Jikoku.